Hi everyone, let's talk about thumbnail sketches. Most paintings pass or fail within the first 15 minutes. And the reason is most people don't take the time to do thumbnail sketches and explore compositional ideas. And that is at the heart of what thumbnail sketches are all about. Thumbnail sketches are small rectangular picture planes that we use to explore our visual idea, right? So we have a photo reference, or we're standing before nature and looking at our motif. And it doesn't take much to do a, I don't know, 30 second um, sketch of a thumbnail sketch and explore one of four different concepts. And then once you find a picture plane that you feel best suits your motif and the poetry of your visual concept, then maybe explore it a little more. Let's talk about the four different types of picture planes. Now remember, the first four lines of every painting are already there for you. They are the top, the bottom, and the two sides. And notice the energies of all of these tops, bottoms, and two sides are completely different. So they serve the shapes that you put in the picture plane in different ways. They create different tensions. And that is at the heart of what this exploration is all about. You're trying to find tensions in your um, motifs that contribute to unifying the painting. Paintings derive their interest from juxtaposing elements. <clears throat> so paintings are unified by juxtaposing elements. Another simple way to say it is, when stuff is different, your paintings become interesting. That is to say, something big next to something small, something dark next to something light. Um, let's talk about the four different types here. We have first the landscape, which is the most popular in the world. And it draws its energy from left to right. So the viewer's eye pans from left to right. It tends to be the most ideal one to paint landscapes with because we pan from left to right when we look at the landscape. Now, if you're from a different part of the world, say India, for example, where you read from right to left, so maybe that, that's a different consideration. But essentially, I want you to think of yourself as the conductor of a great symphony when you're designing your motifs. Um, and you can control how the viewer enters the composition, moves around, winds up at the focal point, and then goes to secondary areas of interest and tertiary areas of interest. The second one is the portrait. Its energy or tensions are from top to bottom or bottom to top. And portraits are so-called because it's essentially a landscape that's flipped at a 90 degree angle. And so the tensions go from bottom to top or top to bottom because they tend to be ideal for painting portraits, right? Uh, the, the classical portrait where you have a bust and then a head, and then in the head you have the upside down triangle, which becomes the focal point, eyes, nose, mouth area. So the viewer tends to come in from the bottom and pan to the top and wind up at the focal point. So that's the concept, right? That's the academic truth um, show. This is important to know as the conductors of our particular symphonies. Moving right along, we have the third type, which is a panorama. Panorama. I tend to do a lot of these in the last few years, and I think it's just from painting outside. And the panorama, as you could guess, it draws its energy from a left to right because we tend to pan the landscape. And I think these are terrific for landscape because that's what we tend to do when we're outdoors in nature is we look at the landscape and we pan from left to right or, or again, vice versa, if you're from India or a different part of the world where you read from right to left. And that does matter. Um, but okay, the, the fourth one is the square. And squares are unique in that there are four equal sides, so the energy tends to come from the four equal sides and pull the viewer's um, gaze to the middle, right? Uh, I tend to use these when I do those cow mug paintings where there's really careful measurement of, of asymmetrical negative shapes is important. But the truth is, whatever motif you have, any one of these four formats can work perfectly fine. These are all about exploration. And I will typically begin by looking at a photo reference or my motif in nature 
and quickly trying maybe 30 seconds to a minute on each one of these formats to see which one will best portray my visual story or my, uh, my visual poetry, if you will. And I might push one of those a little further. Let's do that now in real time, exploring my uh, canoe painting, my canoeer. Okay, so um, earlier I talked about tensions. Let's, let's look at that in real time. Paintings derive their interest from juxtaposing elements. So the first mark I make, I'm already thinking about juxtaposing elements. Here's my horizon line, which is typically the first line I put in my painting. Notice that a high horizon line means I have a large mass at the bottom and a smaller mass at the top. So right away I've established a small, I'm sorry, a small against a large, small mass against a large mass. Paintings derive their interest from juxtaposing elements, or as I said, big stuff against small stuff. Uh -huh. So keeping that in mind, um, as you move right along, I am going to try um, a landscape version, which is pretty close to, um, well, it is quite frankly, close to the, the, the photograph I took was a uh, landscape. Um, but there's different ratios of landscapes, of course, right? So I'm not worried about careful drawing, <laughs> clearly. Um, I just, I'm interested in big shapes, big masses of light, dark, and mid-tone. So first we have the shape, and then by filling it in with value, we can get a sense of light, dark, mid-tone. I like to do simple notons, these simple little noton studies of dark, light of the sky or the paper, and then mid-tone. Um, in this particular composition, I have two mid-tones, a dark mid-tone and a lighter mid-tone, which makes up the water. But for my purposes, honestly, just uh, dark, light, and mid-tone of the distant headlands is all I really need. No sophisticated drawing. That tells me a lot of information, information um, that really informs the tensions that I talked about. Look at the ratio of the negative shape of the sky versus the ratio of the mid-tone of this distant headland versus the ratio of the water, the negative shapes there, and the dark mass of the, uh, the canoeer. Pay particular attention to the axis of things as well. Look at the axis of the distant headland. It has a horizontal axis with the strength of my, hor my horizon line. Then I have a strong diagonal of the canoe. Horizontal, diagonal. And then look how the reflection in the water of the guy in the canoe makes a strong vertical. So I have a horizontal, a diagonal, and a vertical, all working together to create juxtaposing uh, axes and negative and positive shapes. So by having a, a small number of shapes and carefully designed on the page, that has a nice tension to it. So let's try the same photo reference and a portrait motif, okay? So I'll do a low horizon line just for fun and for exploration. Distant headland. And again, you know, if you're counting at home, this is probably going to take me a minute or less to try one of these. They put 10 or 15 minutes aside, and it's time well spent, particularly when consider most paintings pass or fail within the first 15 minutes. Now, if, if I have a high sky there, um, I, I probably have to put clouds in it or something. That empty space just, I don't know, poetically, it doesn't, it just kind of, it seems unnecessary. So, meh, I'm just kind of meh on that one. I like this one better, but it's interesting. I think if I did have a, an interesting cloud arrangement, I could I could certainly contribute to, uh, to deepen the tensions there, to deepen the sophistication of the tensions. Moving right along to a portrait, I'm going to give a... Um, Somewhere just north of the middle there, a high, higher horizon line. And truth be told, I actually did a small oil study of this pan. I did a panorama version of my canoe, and I did a landscape version. I like them both, honestly. They both say two different things. Not one is necessarily better than the other, but they say two different things. And it's okay to explore. You can do more than one. And I'm talking about actually bringing it to a... Uh, finished painting. Um, it's okay. I've definitely explored various um, picture plane motifs of the, of the same photo reference. It's okay. Artists tend to be curious, and it's not uncommon to do more than one version. Um, 
not too shabby. So take a look even just as at these three and look how the tensions are different. Look how they just feel different, the negative and the positive shape arrangements. You can you can you can feel the different tensions. Again, some might not be inherently worse or better, but just different. And it's up to you to decide which one best portrays your poetry, what you're trying to say in your painting. I'll try it with a square now. I'll do this relatively quickly because I think you're getting the gist. But now I'm talking as I do this and trying to get a lesson across. But with complete concentration, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to bang out a thumbnail sketch in 30 seconds to a minute. Again, not paying real close attention to uh, sophisticated drawing. That can come later. I actually like these three. This one, meh. But um, let's explore the portrait a little deeper, right? There's something there. I'm going to pull this down here, and we'll... I'll show you how to push it, right? So I, I think as a practice, it's a good idea just to get these first four out of the way. Then you sit back, you reflect, and you kind of you kind of look at them. Another quick sort of cheating way to, to get to it also is you could try it backwards. I don't know if you can see this, but um, well, let me try this. If you hold up a mirror, you can see a mirror version of your sketch. So you can see in a real quick way what it will look like uh, flipped. And um, you can do that in the field if you carry a mirror with you or if you simply like uh, sometimes you can use your iPhone which has a reflective surface and you can see what that looks like um, backwards uh, lickety split and sometimes it's uh, it's just better for whatever reason again that enigmatic reason really comes down to tensions all right, so let's try the portrait. I'm just going to explore it a little further, and I'm suggesting that you try your photo reference in all four picture plane formats, and then take one and push it and explore it. And so this this one that I've done in portraiture, we will try with a high horizon line, just for fun, to show you that by exploring picture plane formats and playing with the moving shapes around, you can change the entire feel. Four years of art school and a 20-something year career as an artist. And look at this drawing. <laughs> oh, be quiet. All right. I'm using charcoal pencils. I think this is a 4B. I use 2B, 4B. Honestly, I, I hardly pay attention anymore. I just want to get something dark on a white background as quickly as I can. I can use... I use um, Pieces of vine charcoal sometimes. Get his reflection in there. This one, I actually, that's kind of cool. That says something very different than the others, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, I actually like this one a lot. How about that, as a matter of fact? This one I like because with a high horizon line, I give you more of a foreground. So the viewer tends to come in from the bottom here, works their uh, eye comes up and then ultimately winds up on the poetry right the poetry is what the painting is about it's about this canoe it's a very simple scene it's you know um so all four of these are about the canoe but the way you visually um come into the painting and, and rest on the focal point and then move to secondary areas differs from picture plane to picture plane oddly i've never explored this one in paint but i like this one the best um, but anyway, there you go. Thumbnail sketches. Most paintings pass or fail within the first 15 minutes. So give yourself an advantage by putting in these first 15 minutes. Again, the first 15 is a metaphor for really just the time spent in the beginning to explore the arrangement of abstract puzzle shapes of light, dark, and midtone within a picture plane.